the official investigation into Whitewater demanded that sheaves of private documents were handed over, and it peered into other parts of the Clintons' past. Hillary's role in her law firm in Arkansas came under scrutiny. So did her lucrative investments in the commodities market. There was no conclusive evidence of wrongdoing, but the years of investigation left a nasty smell. And she had the dubious honor of becoming the first First Lady to be called before a federal grand jury. She deeply believes in her own merit, in her own motivation, in the purity of her own positions. And she's basically right. You know, she's not a money-grubbing materialist person. But that doesn't mean she doesn't do things she shouldn't do ethically. And rumbling in the undergrowth were the continual stories of Clinton's womanizing. In early 1998, the papers first reported the name of Monica Lewinsky, a former White House intern who'd allegedly had sex with Clinton in the Oval Office. Humiliating for Hillary. But she backed Clinton's categorical denial. I want you to listen to me. I'm going to say this again. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Miss Lewinsky. But the evidence was mounting against him. Hillary found herself facing the question whether a president who'd had an adulterous affair and lied to cover it up should have to resign. If all that were proven true, I think that would be a very serious offense. That is not going to be proven true. I think we're going to find some other things. And I think that when all of this is put into context and we really look at the people involved here, look at their motivations, look at their backgrounds, look at their past behavior, some folks are going to have a lot to answer for. Hillary has never lived down that broadcast. Nearly three years later, in the thick of her election campaign, she was asked to explain why she'd misled the American people. On live television, the clip was played back to her. The woman who speaks spontaneously in paragraphs fumbled for words. I wish that um, we all could um, look at it uh, from the perspective of history, but we can't yet. We're going to have to wait until those uh, books uh, are written. But from my perspective, you know, I'm uh, very hopeful that um, we can go forward in a united way. At the time, the question which went unanswered and unasked was why she didn't walk out on her husband. I listened to people say, oh, this is a terrible example for her to set, to stay in a marriage like that. You know, who are we to say? Uh, women who aren't famous and in the public spotlight make decisions like that all the time. And we say that we want families to stay together. Families always have huge crises and problems, and some are able to withstand them and some aren't. I think she was pretty damn angry. Her body language was clearly uh, one of anger. Everything that I know about Hillary, she was angry, and she should have been. But instead of running for cover, Hillary chose that moment to strike out on her own. Uh As her husband endured the slow agony of impeachment, Hillary was already moving on. At 51, she decided to come out from his shadow. On the very day the Senate were voting on her husband's guilt, she summoned a top New York political strategist, Harold Ickes. For four hours, they discussed the pros and cons of running for one of the Senate seats from New York State. We knew that the Senate was voting that day on whether or not to convict, but we did not watch the vote. And I would find it hard to believe that uh, the vote was not in her mind, but you would not have known it if you had walked in from Mars that day. Uh, you would not have known that there was something else going on other than her focus on New York and a Senate race. Ickes outlined what he saw as the main drawbacks of running. She did not have a connection with the state. She was an outsider, and the uh, whole problem of being a carpetbagger, two 
could she develop a working relationship with the press? To me, that was, I think, the most important. Three was the, um, the, the difficulty of a campaign. It is a very wearing enterprise, just the physical wear and tear and the mental wear and tear. And four, raising the money. The wear and tear has lasted now for almost 18 months. Mrs. Clinton, elections in Britain last only four weeks. <laughs> and Boy, they that's a good idea. That's a good model. They wonder how you have the stamina to cope with an 18-month campaign. Well, first of all, I'm loving it. I'm having a wonderful time. And I also uh, take a lot of vitamins. But I care deeply about these issues. I know that there are people who view politics and political campaigns as, you know, just another form of entertainment or maybe a sporting event. But, you know, there are real consequences at stake. The number two Democrat in America has often struggled to set the pace against a handsome but virtually unknown Republican, Rick Lazier. People either love her or hate her, and it's not yet certain her New York adventure will have a happy ending. Nobody loves campaigning as much as Bill Clinton, and Hillary doesn't love it as much as Bill Clinton. She's far more normal. She's got a Midwestern reserve, let me put it that way, a stiff upper lip, and she's got a lot of grit, and she doesn't spend a lot of time whining. Thank you. Hillary Clinton will listen if she thinks that she doesn't have the answer already. Thank you so very much. There seems to be a segment of the country that just plain dislike the Clintons, Thank period. They just don't like them. Thank you. I don't think she's a natural politician. I think she is a natural motivator and a pure voice for good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I suppose the questions on everyone's mind is uh, why the Senate and why New York and why me? Well, I don't want to psychoanalyze her, but I think that any psychologist or, psychi or psychiatrist looking at her and asking themselves the questions, why is she running for the Senate, would have to look back and say, well, look what she's been through. And is it any wonder that she wants to establish her own identity? Her power at the moment is charismatic. It's kind of like the Mother Teresa or Princess Diana. And she's kind of cashing that in to get institutional power. And the power she's getting is that of United States Senator, which is one of a hundred and not all that powerful or important to job. And she's kind of crazy to do it, unless you realize that if she gets elected to the Senate, she instantly, instantly becomes a candidate for president in the year 2004 if the Democrats don't win the White House this year. She was married to Bill Clinton and more than two decades suppressed her own aspirations now it's her turn. I think she's great. She's fantastic. I don't like her. Carpetbagger. Send her home. Welcome, carpetbaggers. That's baggers. fine. Carpetbaggers are fine. Hillary? I think she'll pass. I think she's going to do great for this city. New Yorkers are a lot smarter, and they are not going to fall for it. She's a nice lady. She's not from New York. What does she know about New York? Miss Hillary, the first lady lady, thinks she's great. I'm going to vote for her. How can I vote for her? I, I thought you were talking about a local politician. She has no idea what it's like to be a New Yorker. We love Hillary. She has beautiful eyes. She's a socialist. I think she has a lot of personality. Go, Hillary. <laughs>